you know, these conversations about inclusion, diversity, and equity, they've really, really taken on a completely uh, different meaning over the last two, three years. And we've seen why, right? We've seen all of the things that are being publicized in society. But let me tell you what we haven't seen. What we haven't seen enough of is students leading those conversations, is inside schools, what are we doing to make sure that we are setting up systems and structures that support our inclusion, diversity, and equity through access. You know, you can't have conversations about inclusion, diversity, and equity without talking about the access that you're really looking to create. Talking about the fact that we don't have enough children of color in advanced courses, talking about the fact that we don't have a community that, uh, that supports the LGBTQ student population, talking about uh, issues that arise in terms of religious freedoms and, and the freedom to, to pray publicly for Muslim students in a designated space, talking about that stuff is great. That means that you, you have a document in hand, that you really care about what that means. But none of that really creates change without access. What are you doing to create access for those marginalized students to end up in those upper level courses like advanced placement courses? What are you doing that creates access for the students that want to practice their religious freedoms by setting aside a specific place that they can go and pray? What are you doing that creates access for the students that have been uh, feeling marginalized because they identify as something other than male or female? When you have the conversations and then you put into play what it is that supports them, then they're going to feel like they are now part of something special. That is when you're talking about inclusion, diversity, equity, and access.